fabric span rod. On the steps, on the, on the steps, being taken on how to protect uh, the millions of Americans being impacted by extreme heat across the country. The mayors of Phoenix, Arizona, and San Antonio, Texas will also be on hand to talk about the impacts of the climate crisis on their communities and the steps they are taking with this administration to protect communities from it. Also today, announced his intent to nominate former Mayor Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley as Commissioner of the Social Security Administration. Since day one, the president, the president has fought to strengthen and defend Social Security, which tens of millions of Americans have paid into and depend on for their livelihood. Governor O'Malley is a lifelong public servant who has a proven track record of delivering results for the people he serves and who has always been a strong proponent of strengthening Social Security. President Biden extends his gratitude to the acting commissioner for her steady leadership of the Social Security Administration during this interim period. Now, I know many people have been following the news in Delaware today and have and we're going to have the rule of law. I just don't have anything else to share on this. I would refer you to Department of Justice. Again, this was done independently, and I would also refer you to the to Hunter's representatives. On, on Senator Tuberville and his continued hold on these military promotions, um, he floated a potential way to move the nominations more quickly by saying that he'd be open to limiting the debate time on each individual nominee. Um, does the president believe that it's time to start moving some of these military nominations individually and voting on them individually through the Senate? Look, Jeremy, I understand the question, but this is something that one senator is holding up. One senator, one Republican senator. And it shouldn't be done this way. It shouldn't be done this way. I think the Admiral did a really good job laying, laying out what this means for our military families, our military service members. They don't deserve to be treated this way. When we talk about this particular legislation, uh, and the, not just the legislation, but as we move forward with these types of uh, nominations, they should be done in a bipartisan way. And so it's unfortunate that this senator, Senator Tuberville, is treating this as a political stunt. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, uh, he has to answer to military f families, and he has to answer to military uh, members who do everything that they can to protect us. And he's putting them in harm's way. And so I get the question, but this is really, this is truly, truly on Senator Tuberville here. Does there ever come a point, though, where, you know, especially as the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is set to retire, you need to fill that position where it's maybe worth, especially for the most senior positions that really put national security at risk, to start moving some of these individuals? I, Jerry, th we shouldn't be in this situation. I, I get it. I hear what you're saying. But we should not be in this situation. Senator Tuberville should not be putting our military in this situation, not be using uh, political ploys or political stunts to put our military in this situation, to put not just the military, but our national security for Americans across this country. And so I, I get it. I get that there are potential other pathways uh, to get there, but we shouldn't be here. We just should not be here. And what he is doing is dangerous and it's insulting. Okay, we should. Ms. President Biden has spent most of his political career working on gun laws, on gun reform. Does he believe that someone who is charged with possessing a firearm illegally should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law? So here I'm going to be, uh, I think I know where this question is going, uh, and I'm just going to continue to say, as it relates to this, the case that we're seeing in Delaware, I'm just going to not speak to that. Uh, it is an independent matter. This is up for the Department of Justice. Even with the question that you're asking me, it's up to, uh, it's up to, it's a, it's one of those legal criminal matters, and it's up to that process, that legal process. I'm just not going to speak to it here. But again, the president, when he was a senator, crafted gun legislation. As president, he talks often about the need to get illegal firearms off of our streets. So when someone possesses one illegally, what does the president believe should happen to them? The president has been very clear. You just laid out where his 
position has been, what his policies have been, what he was able to pass into law. I'm going to be very mindful here. I'm going to be very careful because I see where this question is going. And I'm just going to refer you as this has been an independent investigation. It's overseen by the Department of Justice. I'm going to let them speak to this as they are moving forward. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Green. The president has nothing on his schedule today other than his daily presidential briefing. So um, can you share with us yeah. what he's up to, yeah, who he's speaking with? Yes, absolutely. So the president participated in an interview with uh, Jay Shetty, who you all may know, to discuss the administration's effort to tackle the mental health crisis that affects millions of Americans. As you know, the president uh, just, uh, just yesterday announced a new rule. Uh, to make sure that mental health is, de is dealt with in a par with a, in parity, or that mental health is indeed health. You heard him say that directly yesterday. Uh, Jay Shetty's podcast, On Purpose, is the number one health and wellness podcast with an average of 21 million downloads each month. Uh, so just so that you all have this, it will, uh, the interview will post on Monday. And he, of course, has internal meetings. He's had that throughout the day. And later today, he's going to be uh, delivering a toast at a gathering to, uh, to just say, goodbye and thank you to Louisa Terrell. As you all know, uh, she will be leaving her position as the director of OLA, and so we will all be uh, toasting her later today. And then can you um, give us an update when it comes to East Palestine? The president has said that he would go. Um, he has not yet. And also, Governor Mike DeWine asked the president to issue a major disaster declaration um, a few weeks ago. Will, is that something the president is going to do, and if so, when? So on your first question, the president intends to go. Don't have a time or a date to preview at this time. Uh, I have to look into uh, the Governor DeWine's request. I have to check in with the team, and with and I would also refer you to FEMA. I just don't have anything to share on that piece. Uh, let me try and go around here. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, moments ago, you said that nothing has changed when you were asked about the president's previous remarks on his son's business dealings. But the language has, in fact, changed. So I just want to clear this up once and for all. The president has previously said that he has never discussed overseas business dealings with his son. But the White House now says that the president has never been in business with his son. So why the updated language? Which statement is true? Or is this semantics and they're both true? Uh, as I stated on Monday, when I was asked this question multiple times, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed so on this. Nothing true. has changed on this. Uh, and so you could ask me a million different ways uh, on this question. Nothing has changed. The, the only reason I, I ask is because the White House and the, the present circle, you know, that language does seem to be somewhat different. I didn't know if there was any distinction there. I wanted to ask, though, um, about uh, Elizabeth Naftali. She's made more than a dozen visits here to the White House uh, and met with some of the president's uh, most senior advisors. Can you tell us a little bit more about those visits, why she was here? I would have to look into that. I've not, I've not been tracking these, these visits that you're uh, mentioning to me. Thank you, Grant. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I'm trying to go ahead. I wanted to ask about the uh, methane summit today at the White House. Can you just sort of explain who is sort of on this task force that's being established, sort of what the next steps are, um, who was involved, I guess, in the summit today? Uh, so, as you know, the methane summit happened earlier today. It is something that, uh, as it's related to climate, uh, certainly to climate change, this is something that the president uh, certainly is committed to, uh, and you'll hear from him more uh, tomorrow as he talks to, uh, as he talks about uh, the excessive, the uh, excessive heat that we've seen. Uh, so, um, but just to give you a little bit of a the download here, uh, some details. It was the first ever White House methane summit. Uh, the event was brought. Uh, uh, together, uh, brought together federal, state, and local leaders to discuss the need to reduce methane emissions to protect public health and create thousands of good-paying union jobs. Uh, the summit spotlighting cutting-edge detection uh, technology and technologies and how state and tribal governments are responding to dangerous emissions events. Um, look, the way the reasons why we're doing it why now is because millions of Americans are being impacted, as I just mentioned, from extreme heat. You'll hear more uh, from the president tomorrow, and so it is important, and we think that. The the conversation is incredibly timely, uh, and so we were ha we were glad to have it here at the White House. Did the president take part in the summit at all? No, the president did not take part of the summit. I just laid out what his day looked like. He did an interview, 
to talk about mental health because it's, in, it's part of the unity agenda that the president has been talking about for over a year now and wanted to make sure that he communicated directly to millions of Americans, 21 millions of Americans in particular, in particular listen to this podcast. Uh, and I, I mentioned as, as well, he had some internal meetings with some senior members on this team. Okay. I wanted to know if you had any updates on if President Biden uh, is willing to declare a climate emergency. There's been more push from uh, progressive lawmakers and activists for him to do that. So I don't have anything new to share there. Uh, as you know, um, uh, you know uh, the president has the most aggressive uh, and ambitious uh, climate agenda since day one. As I mentioned at the top, as we're as he's going to talk about the extreme health uh, and uh, and. In, in the Inflation Reduction Act is certainly a, an example of how seriously the president has taken this, uh, and he's going to continue to take action. You're going to continue to hear from him on this issue. I just don't have anything to share on climate emergency. Uh, I just don't have any additional actions to preview at this time. But look, I think if you look at the president's actions over this past two years, he's taken he's he's taken more action, has been more aggressive on dealing with climate change than any other president. Uh, let's not the Inflation Reduction Act is going to make a difference as we're trying to deal with this climate crisis. And so he has an ambitious agenda uh, with, to deal with climate, uh, climate, uh, climate change, and he's going to continue to move forward with that agenda. Thanks, Karin. Um, a group of automakers, including GM, are forming a new um, EV charging company uh, to not challenge Tesla. I'm just curious if the White House has any reaction to that or if he played any part in um, helping them get that launched. Are you talking about the the seven companies that are yeah? So look, and you've heard us, you've heard me and others talk about this. That's Binomics. Binomics is working and is in action, and uh, because of this president's policies, you have these seven major uh, automakers coming together to install, I think, thirty thousand uh, high-powered EV charging stations, and that's a that's progress. That's going to help middle-class families. Uh, the president's investing in America agenda. This is part of that. This is part of Binomics, as you hear us uh, talk about. It's creating new union jobs uh, for installation and maintenance. So this is an important move, uh, step forward as we talk about uh, how to deal with this climate crisis. Any antitrust concerns about multiple companies working together in that fashion? So, look, I, I don't have any, uh, any concerns to lay out to, for you today, but we think this is an important step forward as we're dealing with this issue, as we're also talking about build, uh, creating jobs, as we're building the economy. Again, this is Binomics in action. Go ahead, Francesca. Thanks, Karine. Has any progress been made since we last talked about this on bringing home Travis King from North Korea? I don't have anything new to share uh, than what I shared yesterday uh, during the briefing. Look, as you know, um, we have uh, we have the UN, we have the DOD, we have the State Department here, us here as well at the White House are all engaging together on this. I just don't have any um, more information to, to share. We are still uh, trying to gather all the facts on this, and our concern is the well-being of, of the private. I just don't have anything uh, further to share on this. And the Federal Reserve has just announced an interest rate hike by a quarter point, which brings it to the highest level in 22 years. Does the White House have comment on that? As you know, we see the Federal Reserve as being independent. We give them the space uh, to make sure that they are able to make monetary decision. It is up to them uh, to make that decision. I'm just not going to comment about uh, about their about the decision today. Okay. Um, regarding the federal judge in California blocking the administration's asylum rules, um, as of right now, what is the backup plan should um, this ruling not be stayed by the Ninth Circuit of the Supreme Court? So look, uh, right now the way that we see the ruling is nothing has changed. Uh, the the um, uh, we think that uh, uh, we think that they made a mistake, but nothing has changed. Uh, it, we continue to move forward with our plan. Uh, the Department of Justice has responded uh, to this, uh, so I certainly will refer to, to, to you to them. But nothing has changed. We're going to move forward. Let's not forget the action, the plan that the president has put forward has has actually shown uh, 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 have actually shown a, a lower number in uh, in migrants illegal illegal migration into this country than we've seen in the last two years. So the plan the, the president has put forward is working, and that is important. Uh, again, nothing has changed. In this, we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, I believe we're going to see this. Uh, the stay that we're uh, for the next 14 days, and the Department of Justice has appealed it, and uh, and trying to extend the stay. So that's where we are currently at this moment. Uh, good. Thanks a lot, Green. Uh, just the other day, a uh, U.S. drone was damaged by a Russian military jet over Syria. How does the U.S. classify? that particular incident? Has there been any outreach by U.S. officials to their Russian counterparts about this, about rules of engagement going forward? 
So a couple of things we've seen the reports, uh, the early reports of a second uh, Russian fighter aircraft this week uh, flying dangerously close to our drone uh, on a, def on a uh, de defeat ISIS mission. Uh, so I would reiterate that Russian, Russia's uh, close approach to and deployment of flares over U.S. drones during a routine mission uh, against ISIS targets violates. It is indeed violates established protocols and international norms. So we remain focused on, on the mission to defeat ISIS as a evidence uh, by our recent strike against an ISIS leader in Syria this month. Uh, and so we are certainly aware of the initial reports, don't have anything further to share on that piece. And separately, um, not wanting you to comment on the Fed decision, but rather to comment on the White House's view as it relates to inflation. Do you see inflation coming down uh, from the level that it is right now, around 3%? even further by the end of this year. So I'm not going to get into predictions or hypotheticals from here. What I can say is that the president has been very committed, very committed to making sure that we lower costs for the American people. We have seen from other data points, as you know, uh, that we've seen inflation come down by two thirds uh, in the past 12 months. That's important. Uh, and a lot of that is because of the president's economic policies. Uh, and not just that, we've seen wages go up. Uh, we see inflation easing. Uh, we see creating jobs, more than 13 million jobs. That's because of what this, the work that this president has done. I'm not going to get into hypotheticals. I'm going to let the experts uh, detect or try to figure out what that inflation looks like moving forward. What we're going to focus on is doing everything that we can uh, to lower costs for the American family. You see inflation easing in the response that you just gave. Is that based upon uh, a forecast coming from the president's economic advisors? That's based on the facts. That's based on the data that we have seen, CPI, PPI, all the data that we've seen the past uh, couple of months. Uh, that's where we're getting that, two-thirds. That's, that's important. Inflation has fallen for 12 months in a row, 12 months in a row. Uh, and that's because of the work that this administra administration has done. And so, look, I'm not going to get, again, into forecast here. That is something for the experts to do. Uh, but I can speak to the work that this president has done and will continue to do. Uh, when it comes to his economic plan, the number one thing that he talks about is lowering costs for the American people. And he'll continue to do that. Thanks. See you tomorrow, guys. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.